Um, okay, so the point that has to be made is typically when we think about um, the Bible, because the Bible has been whitewashed, we often think about white folks. We think Daniel's white. We think the apostles are white. We think Jesus is white. We think everybody is white. Okay. The point being is when we think about the story of Daniel, when we think about Daniel, because remember he came from the tribe of Judah, everybody is black except for the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the one who came in and just destroyed everything. They're, they're the Greeks. They are the Romans. Those are the white folks. But everybody else are people of color. And what he has on the screen is hell comes down on the black world and the colored world and the world between Ptolemies and the Seleucids. And we'll read about them when we start reading. Excuse me for interrupting you. I can't see the screen. Can anybody, can y'all see it? No, it's gone now. Really? All right, wait a minute. Wait, let me try it again. Um, I did hit share screen. Let me try again. Share screen. Okay, it's up now. Okay. So it says hell comes down on the black world. Um, and what we're saying, what he's saying is everybody, um, all of the key players, all of the, the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, we're all black. We were all, all of this hell um, that's being leashed out or on people of color. Um, and he has arrows and stuff pointing all over the place. So we know that J Japheth were um, Gomer, Magog, Tubal, Meshach, Teras, they're the white folks, okay? Ham and Shem are people of color, but not all people of color are the same. And y'all know that, y'all know that Ham is, um, Cush and Mizram and Canaan. So that's like Southwest Asia, Canaan, and that's Africa. But Shem is um, the Middle East, what we call the Middle East now, which is really North Africa. Um, and these are black folks. So they are two different sets of black people, but we're all people of color. So when we hear about this story and about all these wars that are going on, just know that all of these, the war, just like it is now, the wars are going on for control of Israel, people of color. Um, that's what they're fighting for, control, dominion, rule. And of course, it's our punishment and our judgment from Christ for our disobedience. But these are the tools or the belt that he uses over us to bring us to subjection. Y'all got that? The prophecies of Daniel were given 200 years before it happened. So when we start to read, just remember that Daniel was saying 200 years in advance and that these people who are warring are warring against one another for rule and rulership over us. All right, that's it. That's my intro. Thank you. Wow, that was good. I like the way he broke that down because, man, that makes so much sense. It goes back to the Tower of Babel because when God... Uh, 
what do you call it? Like when he split up the nations and gave them their own languages, the Bible says that they all were giving their own gods, right? But except for Israel, Israel is the only one that did not, because Israel had their own God, right? Israel has their own God. So that makes so much sense because that's the only one that they have no dominion over. That's the only nation that they have no dominion over. So that makes so much sense. It just, it's good. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready to start reading? Did anybody want to read? I can read if nobody wants to read. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, Elder, did you have a place where you wanted to stop at? Because I don't want to go too far so we don't get too far down and too confused. Um, did you have a place or? Um, not particularly. I know that. Um, and I just want to encourage everybody on the line, please, if y'all have input, if y'all got revelation, if you know something, um, just stop, stop it and, and let us all, um, you know, learn and come to the realization or the truth for this. Um, I think we'll just go slow and, you know, um, wherever we're led to stop, we'll just stop and have a discussion. And I know um, Sister Serena, I know that you said that this was like one of your favorite books. So we're definitely looking to hear from you and your input on this because I'm not an expert. I'm not a history buff and I'm learning. So if you know, um, you know, let us know. Share, please. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, I apologize. I had my kids let my dog out and I wanted to put them away. Could you go over your last part of what you said? Not because I care to debate about it. I just didn't hear. It. Um, what, what do you, what about what? I'm your sorry. intro. The, the part that what about I the Semitic people versus the Gentiles. All right, wait a minute. Let me go back because, um, I know I for, went forward and Again, you think we would know how to use this stuff considering we do it all the time. Oh, there it is, go get it. All right. Um, you talking about this screen right here? Yes, I, I, I just heard you putting a difference between the Gentiles and the Semitic people. Right, the, the, the Gentiles we know are come from Esau. We know that, that because Esau, um, the white nations or the J J Japhetic people are descendants of Esau. And that's Gog and Magog, um, Tubal. And you see all of them that are um, under him, they're, they're from Europe and Asia, okay? And those, um, and he has an arrow and it says Gentiles under the influence of the fallen angel and the devil, AKA a white devils, okay? So those are the Gentile nations. We know Ham and Shem are both um, nation, um, color folks or people of color, but they're not the same. And we know that all black people are not the same. All people of color are not the same. So the descendants of Ham are Cush, Misraim, Put, and Canaan. And that's Southwest, Southwest Asia, Canaan, and Africa. Shem which we know the 12 tribes came from. Yeah, the Semitic people. Right, the Semitic people. We're, we're from what we call the North, the Middle East now, but it's really North Africa, okay? And that's, mm -hmm. that's Elam, Aram, Asher, Lud, and Arpashad, if I'm saying that right. So- Arpashad. Right, that's the difference between the three sons of Noah. So- do you do you believe the um, white man can be saved? Oh, any everybody can be saved. Let me let me just say this: Gentiles can be saved because remember when when Christ um, allowed Paul to go out, he was ministering to the Gentiles. So of course they're going to be saved, and the word tells us that they're going to be serving us. 
Okay, so in order to serve somebody, you're going to have to be in a submissive state. So there are Gentiles um, who can be saved, who will be saved. It's not just going to be us. We would like to think that, but God is a just God. So right. yeah, and, uh, just, and Gentiles can be saved. Okay, I was just asking because I, I see that underneath it, it says they mingle themselves with fallen angels and their devils or something. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't see all that clear with my glasses. So I just didn't know. The influence of the fallen angels, the principalities, which we'll hear about when, when we start to hear about, um, like the Prince of Persia that held up Gabriel from bringing the message. That's a principality that was over that region. That was a principality over the kingdom of Persia and Persian rule over us during that time. That's part of that statue. And so they are under the influence of, just like now, um, the world leaders are under the influence of the fallen angels. That's why we got all this fallen angel technology. That's why everything that they come out with is lobbied and launched toward people of color. You know, they try to start off and say, oh yeah, it originated here, but somehow it always ends up in our community and over us. And mm -hmm. it's all us. And that's what, the influence of the fallen angels and their hatred for us, the people of God. And that's why he put that, they're under the influence of the fallen angels, the devil. Okay, so he mean in those 13 families that we hear so much about, that's who he mean is right. under the, the, okay, okay, I'm following you now. Thank you so much. All right, who's reading? Is Sister Gwen, what you got? No, I don't have anything. I was just gonna say, we can take our time. Like nobody feel rushed. Anybody have questions, comments, anything. We could take our time. Cause if we don't finish this today, we could definitely just finish it next Thursday because it is kind of a long chapter. It has like 40 something um, verses or whatever. Um, Sister Sean, if we could just go and stop at like maybe verse um, four, I think that'd be a good place to stop. Like you could read verse four and then stop at five, I guess. Okay, conflicts to come. Also, I, in the first year of Darius, the Medi, I, Gabriel, arose to be an encouragement and a protection for him. And now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings are going to arise in Persia. Then a fourth will become far richer than all of them. When he becomes strong through his riches, he will stir up the whole empire against the realm of Greece. Then a mighty warlike threatening king will arise who will rule with great authority and do as he pleases. But as soon as he, Alexander, has risen, his kingdom will be broken by his death and divided toward the four winds of heaven, north, south, east, and west, but not to his descendants, nor according to the Grecian authority with which he ruled, for his kingdom will be torn out and uprooted and given to others, his four generals to the exclusion of these. Did y'all have any commentaries there? Um, on the screen, sis, mm -hmm. I think he addressed the first few um, verses, mm -hmm. and he kind of broke it down and told us who the he was and what he was talking about. So I'm going to just read what's on the screen up until chapter, I mean, verse four, I'm sorry. So also, I am the first year of Darius the Mede. And he has an arrow going from the Mede as the new prince for this ruler or the fallen angel. Okay. Even I, Gabriel, stood to confirm and to strengthen Michael the Archangel, Michael the Archangel, helping Gabriel with this prince. 
um, and to strengthen him. So what, what he's saying here is, um, who was talking, I guess, at this point right here is Michael. And he was, he had to be called to, um, to help Gabriel because the prince or the principality, um, his time of rulership was over and he didn't want to leave um, because they, they're lawful and being there because you know Christ allowed them to be there. But when it was time for him to um, submit and move so that the next prince or principality over us or over the region could um, have his reign, this particular archangel or fallen angel, I'm sorry, didn't want to move. So this prince or the fallen angel. So that's what he was saying in that first verse. And now I will shew thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the first and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. And he has a um an arrow pointing to that statue. Remember that um Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about his statue, and he's showing exactly where they are as far as the the kingdoms and the statue at this point, um, the mead was up around a chest area, but now um, Grisha is coming and that's in like the torso. And a mighty king shall stand up and shall rule with great min, um, dominion and do according to his will. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Ar Artaxerxes, is that Artaxerxes, is that his name? I think I'm saying it right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so Artaxerxes, at this point, he's talking about Artaxerxes is getting ready to come in with great dominion and, and do his will. Because we know that he came in, that was the one that came in, I think, at 19. He was a young buck when he came in, but he died early because he was like fast and furious. And we find out later that his kingdom is going to be split. And the people that, I don't want to get ahead, but anyway, his kingdom is going to be split. He's going to leave. He's going to um, he's going to succumb early, and I think we touched on that in a previous chapter where we talked about how he just came in like a whirlwind and tore things up, and then he died. And it says, "And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, and that is when he dies, and it shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity." So when it says not to his posterity, even though he was um, wicked, he wasn't as bad as the people that are going to follow him. He he had a little more, um, uh, I don't know what the right word is. He wasn't quite as atrocious as the people who are going to end up with his kingdom that's going to be divided is, nor according to his dominion. which he ruled for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And now here he has an arrow according to his dominion, Alexander the Great at 19. No, so I'm sorry, it wasn't um, Artaxerxes, it was Alexander. Cause he said Alexander the Great died at 32 years. So at this point is talking about the his here is Alexander the Great. And when it when it when it says he's plucked up, that means he's going to die. He's going to die young. So, but he came in with great strength. He was rich. Um he was rich and he came in. He was far richer than all of the previous rulers before him and he was able to acquire those great riches and when he grew mighty and heightened his power and wealth when he extended his power he was able to incite the whole kingdom so he was able to mobilize the whole kingdom through his great wealth and power and he still again all of this started when he was 19 years old he was a powerful king um, he was a warrior king. 
And he did whatever he felt like he was big enough to do, basically. And he took great authority and pleasure in doing whatever it was he wanted to do. And so he, his kingdom grew strong, right? And it was well-established. But when he dies, his kingdom is going to be broken up and divided. And it's going to be in four different directions. And when it when it's broken into four different directions, the people that um actually are going to um again take rulership, they're each going to take a piece and they're going to tear that thing up. And this is when the, the fighting, the 200 years worth of fighting starts because they're just going to be warring against each other. That's where I'm at so far with that. What y'all got? That was good. I think, <laughs> I hope everybody is following it because it is a lot to understand, if, especially. But if you've been following Daniel since you've been on the line, then you know this should be familiar because we've seen this, um, you know, like the framework for this. We've seen it in Daniel 2, you know, with the statue and these are the, the same order of the successive kingdoms. And then we've seen it in chapter 7 and we've seen it in chapter 8 with the ram and the goat. This is the same thing that we, you know, we've seen, but we're just getting a little bit more details on it. So, and again, the, the um, Gabriel is... Um, He's giving him the interpretation of the vision that Daniel's seen. And we're talking about a time frame that's going to take us from the beginning of the 70 weeks to the very, very, very end of time, till the return of Christ. So he, so it has to run us through these world kingdoms in order to get to that point. So that's the point of this, y'all. I can see my, well, what do we need to know this for? But that's what the vision is. It's bringing us from that point all the way to the very end of time. So that's why. All right, what y'all got? Y'all got any questions or any comments or any information that we didn't cover? Is this confusing or are, are we good? Yeah, I am. I'm confused, but I'm only confused because I don't know much about the book of Daniel. So y'all go ahead. I'm just here listening. Don't worry about, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up or what have you, but you know, I'm, I am listening now. Okay. We're in the dispensational time now of the 10 toes. For on Daniel's statue, this dispensation that we're in now is the 10 toes. And it's still the Roman Empire. Absolutely, because when Daniel, remember when Daniel was doing all this, Christ hadn't even been born yet. So just think about how many times the, the temple was defiled and tore down and rebuilt even before Christ appeared. And then even after he appeared, appeared it was torn down and defiled again. So this I, I liken it to this. Whenever, when I was in school, um, I never could get into history. It's just something that just never um, appealed to me because it all felt like a lie. You know, the only thing we were taught as Black folks that we were slaves and that we, you know, that's where our history started for us as slaves. Like we didn't have anything before slavery and it just didn't make sense to me. So when we, I don't know if any of you all remember when we did this series, Your Bible is Black History. This is when I started to get into wanting to understand the history of the Bible because the history of the Bible is truly our story. You know, our story has been hidden from us all along. So to make it, um, I don't know if it if it'll it make it, you know, um, appealing, more appealing for you to want to read and and you know and get to history because this is our history. This is our ancestors. This is what they did that led us to you know where we are. This is how we got where we are. You know, I've always said you you can't possibly know where you're going if you don't know where you've been or where you come from, and this 
you know, these historical books, these prophetic, these um, your prophetic books, these, you know, um, books of the Bible is our story. And we can learn who we are and who our savior is um, when we read the Old Testament and when we learn the history of our ancestors, of our people, and why, you know, why we end up doing some of the things we do and why we are the way we are and why the world is the way it is. You know, it's all right here in the book. I would just like to add that a lot of our stuff that we go through, if you read Deuteronomy 28, the curses is because of our, our ancestors. I hate saying that now because of how they pray into it and the way y'all just broke that down. It just, yeah. But anyway, how they promised to honor the covenant and then they broke it. So even us not knowing who we are, God said, you're not going to know who, who you are. That's part of God saying, because of our disobedience unto him. But he did use the white man to do it. You're right when you say that. They hid our history from us, but that was part of God saying, because of what y'all did, y'all not going to know who y'all are. And he went on to tell them, and y'all going to pray to foreign gods, to idols of wood and stone. But he said, in the last days, in the end of the days, I'm going to bring it back to you. This is why so many of us are beginning to wake up and to serve him and to begin to call him by his rightful name. Because he said, you're going to remember my name. I'm going to cause y'all to remember my name. But it's part of our curse because of what our ancestors did. They broke the covenant with God. And not only did they break the covenant, but you know what they said? They said, let it be on our children and our children's children. Didn't they say that? I said, why they say that? So they, they kept that right between y'all. Yes, they, they did that. And then they <laughs> put us in it. Like what we got to do with y'all. What we got to do with it. I ain't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> Could have kept that right between y'all. They sure did. They said, let his blood be on our children and our children, children. And they understood when they said that God go from, you could read it in the word of God. And I, and I want to say it's in Leviticus, how it goes on to the fourth and fifth and sixth generation. He said, I will visit the iniquity of your, to your fourth and fifth generation. And they could have just kept that right to themselves, mm -hmm. to them. Hallelujah. That was good, Serena, how you broke that down. And I agree. A lot of people are waking up and I'm just, that was beautiful. Thank you. All right, y'all ready to go on? Uh, verse five. Then the king of the south, Egypt, will be strong, along with one of his princes, who will be stronger than he, and have dominance over him. His dominion will be a great dominion. Oh, wait. His, wait. His dominion will be a great dominant dominion. After some years, the Syrian king of the north and the Egyptian king of the south will make an alliance. The daughter Bernice of the king of the south will come to the king of the north to make an equitable and peaceful agreement marriage, but she will not retain the power of her position, nor will he retain his power. She will be handed over with her attendants and her father as well as he who supported her in those times. But out of a branch of her familiar roots will one 
her brother, Potomli the third. I don't know what that name is. You Gades the first arise in his place, and he will come against the Syrian army and enter the fortress of the king of the north, and he will deal with them and will prevail. Also, he will carry off to Egypt their Syrian gods with a little g, with their cast images and their precious and costly treasures of silver and of gold. And he will refrain from waging war against the king of the North for some years. And the king of the North will come into the realm of the king of the South, but he will retreat to his own country, badly defeated. His son will prepare for battle and assemble a multitude of great forces, which will keep on coming and overflow the land and pass through so that they may wage war as far as his fortress. The king of the south, Potomli the, is that the sixth, the fifth? I'm not sure, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, Pelter of Egypt will be engaged, enraged and go out and fight with the king of the north. Wait and not I'm sorry, where you at, Sean? Um, I'm on number 10. Okay, can you stop when you finish reading 10? Yeah, we'll be enraged and go out and fight with the king of the north, Anoctus the third, the great. And the Syrian king will, ra will rise a great multitude army, but the multitude shall be given into the hand of the Egyptian king. I'm sorry, I was in 11. Okay. So we stopped at 12. Okay. Sister Gwen, what you got on this? Um, just, I guess, to kind of like try to make it understandable, um, I guess just the fact that like where you left off elder where you know we're in the successive kingdoms then when you got to the kingdom of rome you had alexander the great he died he didn't have anyone to take over so it's his kingdom split four ways so now because his kingdom split the four ways you have the king of the north and the king of the south which is two of the four that are now the two rulers because they've taken over the other two and now we have the king of the north and now the king of the south. And so now, now it becomes a soap opera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because, um, wait a minute, let me see. I think he put something up here. Okay. So on the screen, um, and I think this is talking about the, what um, Sister Sean just read. It said the name of all the Macedonian rulers of Egypt, a dynasty founded by Ptolemy, the close friend and general of Alexander the Great, who took charge of Egypt after the latter's death and declared himself king. And that's Ptolemy um, in 304 BC. The dynasty ended with the death of Cleopatra in 30 BC. The Macedonian Greek dynasty, the Ptolemies, he founded rule Egypt for more than 300 years. There were 15 Ptolemic leaders and they ruled in 332 BC to 30 BC from Alexandria. Cleopatra was the last of the Ptolemies. When she died in 30 BC, Romans took over on the territory formerly controlled by the Ptolemies. The Seleucids, and this is um, the, another one of the kingdoms, that took over the huge kingdom had two capitals, which Seleucia is founded in around 300 BC, Antioch in Syria and Seleucia in Mesopotamia, or what we call Iraq right now. Seleucia established a dynasty that lasted for two centuries, during which time the Hellenistic art, a fusion of Greek and Near Eastern artistic traditions developed and flourished. So now, the war, now we're talking about the wars that were um, between the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, um, what Sister Gwen was just talking about, these two kingdoms that just came and 
they're they're vying for um I guess to be world leaders, world dominion. So Ptolemy, he was in the south, and you see him down here. Um, he ruled from Egypt. And 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 Antigonus, Antigonus was a Syria, he ruled from the north. And Seleucus, he was the one who he initially was the one who had all the rule, but somehow Antigonus and Ptolemy um, superseded him and then they were fighting between one another. These are the two where they decided in order to have peace, that's where they married the daughter. I think the daughter, they wanted to bring peace through marriage. And so they married their daughter to somebody else, but that didn't last because they ended up killing the daughter. Not only killed her, but killed her father, her brothers and anybody else associated with them um, at that point. So their um, peace treaty that they were trying to have just didn't last at all because again, they're fighting for power and dominion and trying to gain territory. Everybody wanted to be a boss. And I think this part that's so profound about it is because the Bible is prophesying this to us before this even happens down to the fact that, that they're gonna uh, that the king of the, which king was it? It was the king of the, hold on. The king of the south tries to make the peace treaty with the king of the north by giving his daughter Bernice. And that's what the scripture is telling us. But then it says in the same, uh, what line was that? Uh, but I think it's. as a peace treaty thinking that that will be his edge to be able to make their kingdom fall and he'll be able to take over but she does not she does not can y'all hear me yeah okay i'm sorry because my internet it said my internet wasn't stable but she does not remain loyal to her father she actually remains loyal to her husband so that plan didn't work and so the fact that it's very um the Bible is very uh, consistent with the actual historical events way before this even happened, down to this very these very details, even to the you know the fact of their little like drama is just very profound, you know. Yeah, there were a lot of insurrections. Um, there were um, there was a lot of infighting, even within you know even trying to fight. The other kingdoms, they were infighting and fighting at once amongst one another. Um, Seleucus, who was the the original one who came in with the most power after Alexander died, um, he reigned for three years. He had a son. One of his sons sons reigned when Seleucus died, and then he was killed. And then they put another one of his sons, who was a teenager. And he reigned for 37 years, it says. And, and so this is just letting you know that this infighting, this fighting between these um, world leaders, I'll call them, were went on, this is 200 years worth. So just think your children, you're fighting, you pass it on to your children, they're fighting. They pass it on to their children, they're fighting. So this is how it went. You know, one generation to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And all the all this time, they're doing all this fighting and trying to gain this power. We are still under oppression. We are still in captivity. We are still being punished. And all this fighting is going over, going, going, you know, they're fighting amongst one another, but we're still in oppression. We're still being judged. We're still being punished. And they can't even get themselves together. Yeah, when they started over Ukraine, I told my husband, I said, Japheth's kids is at it again. Mm -hmm. Ukraine and Russia, and they just sent in so much aid over there. It's like crazy. And then Haiti is right in our back door. But again, I'm not going, and I keep going back to this because I refuse to give them all the credit. But again, God told us was that nobody going to deliver us out of our situation, but him. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Martin Luther King wasn't going to do it. Malcolm X wasn't going to do it. He said, when y'all come out of that situation, it's going to it's gonna be me that bring you out. Absolutely. Cause that's how he gets his glory. That's how he get his glory. He said he will not allow another one to um, rob his glory, share his glory, I'm sorry, share his glory. But again, it's because of our covenant, we broke with him. Right, and we know that our God is a God of covenant. And that's why he esteems his word even above his name, that should tell you even right now. above his name. That should tell you everything right there. God said it's better for you not to make a promise than mm. to make a promise and not keep it. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. So he, you know, we we knew this judgment was coming. And this is the thing about our, our our forefathers, ancestors, whatever you want to call them, they knew what they were doing. None of this was done in ignorance, y'all. None of what caused them to end up in captivity, none of what they did, they did in ignorance. They knew they weren't um, um, obeying the Sabbath laws. They knew they weren't um, following the covenant that they made with God. They knew what they were doing. They were rebellious. And you know, God hates rebellion. He hates it. Amen. Even to the point, if you don't, I'm just to go back to something I said before. That's why Jesus cried. I even, and I'm getting into a little bit of what I wanted to talk about on Monday, but even how he entered to the city and the Bible talks about how he entered the city and then they, they proclaimed him as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You know, they proclaimed him as the Messiah, but then they turned around and said, crucify him. Mm -hmm. But that's why Jesus told him and he cried and he said, if you would have been, if you would have realized the day of your visitation saying, if you would have really recognized I'm he who you seek after, who you've been waiting for, let me put it that way. I am he who you've been waiting for, who the scriptures speak of, but because y'all don't realize it and that's when he started talking about um, antagonist epiphany he said he gonna lay y'all to the ground he said he gonna lay y'all even to the ground but had they just truly received him as they king and and obeyed the the the, the prophets that you know that's why jesus said y'all always and he's talking about us if we really believe we the Hebrews, y'all always kill the prophets. I don't care who I send to y'all, y'all kill them. Because they ain't tickling your ear. Mm -hmm. Y'all just kill them. But he, if they would have recognized that I'm who the scriptures speak of, we would not be in this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, let me make myself a little more clear. That's when that second temple, when Jesus walked out and say, and he was speaking in two folds, tear this temple down and in three days I will raise it up. He was speaking of his body and he was saying about that natural temple that it was going to be torn down. And they couldn't even perceive that. They started saying, this took us 46 years or something to build. And are you going to raise it back up in three days? They couldn't even discern that Christ was talking about his body. But that's who he's talking about right here. Antagonist is, uh, however you pronounce it, is the one that tore that temple up that Jesus was speaking of. Now, ladies, it's a video here. I don't know if y'all want to watch this video. I don't know how many, I don't know how long it is. He put a quick little video in here. Y'all let me know what y'all want to do with this. I say let's watch it. And we, like I said, we don't have to rush. We can always be back here on Thursday. You know, it's a lot of information. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to let it play. Let me see. 
And as for me in the first year of Darius and me, I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will show you the truth. Behold, three more kings shall arise in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than all of them. And when he has become strong with his riches, he shall stir up all against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king shall arise, and shall rule with great dominion and do as he wills. And as soon as he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken and divided towards the four winds of heaven, but not to his posterity, nor according to the authority with which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up and go to others besides these. Then the king of the south shall be strong, but one of his princes shall be stronger than he and shall rule, and his authority shall be a great authority. After some years they shall make an alliance to the daughter of the king of the south and shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the strength of her arm, and he and his arm shall not endure. But he shall not be given up, and her attendants, he who fathered her, and he who supported her in those times. And from a branch from her roots, one shall arise in his place. He shall come against the army and enter the fortress of the king of the north, and he shall deal with them and shall prevail. He shall also carry off to Egypt their gods with their metal images and their precious vessels of silver and gold. And for some years he shall refrain from attacking the kingdom of the north. Then the latter shall come into the realm of the king of the south, but shall return to his own land. His son shall wage war and assemble a multitude of great forces, which shall keep coming and overflow and pass through, and again shall carry the war as far as his fortress. Then the king of the south, moved with rage, shall come out and fight against the king of the north, and he shall raise a great multitude, but it shall be given into his hand. And when the multitude is taken away, his heart shall be exalted, and he shall cast down tens of thousands, but he shall not prevail. For the king of the north shall again raise a multitude greater than the first and after some years he shall come on with a great army and abundant supplies in those times many shall rise against the king of the south and the violent among your own people shall lift themselves up in order to fulfill the vision but they shall fail then the king of the north shall come and throw up siege works and take a well-fortified city and the force of the south shall not stand or even his best troops for there shall be no strength to stand but he who comes against him shall do as he wills, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land with destruction in his hand. He shall set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom, and he shall bring terms of an agreement and perform them. He shall give him the daughter of women to destroy the kingdom, but it shall not stand or be to his advantage. Afterward, he shall turn his face to the coastlands and shall capture many of them, but a commander shall put an end to his insolence. Indeed, he shall turn his insolence back upon him. Then he shall turn his face back toward the fortress of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and shall not be found. Then shall arise in his place one who shall send an exactor of tribute for the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be broken, neither in anger nor in battle. In his place shall arise a contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given. He shall come in without warning and obtain, obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Armies shall be utterly swept away before him and broken, even the prince of the covenant. And from the time that an alliance is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, and he shall become strong with a small people. Without warning, he shall come into the richest parts of the province, and he shall do what neither his fathers nor his father's fathers have done scattering among them plunder spoil and goods he shall devise plans against strongholds but only for a time and he, sh he shall stir up his power and his heart against the king of the south with a great army and the king of the south shall wage war with an exceedingly great and mighty army but he shall not stand for plots shall be devised against him even those who eat his food shall break him his army shall be swept away and many shall fall down slain and as for the two kings, their hearts shall be bent on doing evil. They shall speak lies at the same table, but to no avail, for the end is yet to be at the time appointed. And he shall return to his land with great wealth, but his heart shall be set against the holy covenant, and he shall work his will and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come into the south, but it shall not be this time as it was before. For ships of Kittim shall come against him, 
and he shall be afraid and withdraw and shall turn back and be enraged and take action against the holy covenant. He shall turn back and pay attention to those who forsake the holy covenant. Forces from him shall appear and profane the temple and fortress and shall take away the regular burnt offering. And they shall set up the abomination that makes desolate. He shall seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant. But the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. And the wise among the people shall make many understand. Though for some days they shall stumble by sword and flame, by captivity and plunder. When they stumble, they shall receive a little help, and many shall join themselves to them with flattery. And some of the wise shall stumble so that they may be refined, purified, and made white until the time of the end. For it still awaits the appointed time. And the king shall do as he wills. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished, for what is decreed shall be done. He shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers or to the one who loved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. He shall honor the god of the fortress instead of these. A God whom his fathers did not know, he shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He shall deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign God. Those who acknowledge him shall load with honor. He shall make them rulers over many and shall divide the land for a price. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, but the king of the north shall rush upon him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen and with many ships. And he shall come into countries and shall overflow and pass through. He shall come into the glorious land and tens of thousands shall fall, but these shall be delivered out of his hand. Edom and Moab and the main part of the Ammonites. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall become the ruler of the treasures of gold and of silver and the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Cushites shall follow in his train. But news from the east and the north shall alarm him, and he shall go out with great fury to destroy and devote many to destruction. And he shall pitch his palatial tents between the sea and the glorious holy mountains. Yet he shall come to his end with none to help him. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever but you daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others stood, one on this bank of the stream and one on, the, on that bank of the stream. And someone said to the man clothed in linens, who was above the waters of the stream, How long shall it be till the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the stream. He raised his right hand and his left hand toward heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times, and a half time. And that when the shatterings of the power of the holy people come to an end of all these things will be finished. I heard, but I did not understand. Then I said, Oh, my Lord, what shall be the outcome of these things? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined, but the wicked shall act wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand but those who are wise shall understand. And from that time, the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate is set up there shall be 1290 days. Blessed is he who waits and arrives at the 1335 days. But go your way till the end and you shall rest and shall stand in your allotted place at the end of the days.
All right, what y'all think about that? Um, questions, um, Elder Marie, is it Elder Marie or which, I'm sorry, but I'm, I don't want to mess your title up. What is it, Elder Marie? I'm not, I'm not entitled, sis, what's up? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so do you believe that he, Daniel saw, um, um, help me, Holy Spirit. Do you believe Daniel saw the um, first desolation of the temple when Jesus was, so 78, they put it that way. Or did you, do you believe he saw the third temple all the way to the third temple? Um, I think he saw, I don't think he saw all the way to the third temple. I think he saw to the Maccabean revolt, which is the 400 years. Remember in the Bible, it's a 400 year period between Malachi and Matthew, where they're saying it was 400 years that nothing happened. Right. Well, that was when the Maccabean revolt was going on. That's when Jesus was little. That's when he was a young boy coming up. And that's when um, what he was describing, that's what he's describing, where they did the desolation, where they put the pigs on there and the, and the, um, the Maccabeans revolted against it. And they actually fought and was kicking butt when they, des when they desecrated the, um, the temp, the, um, I'm sorry, the um, altars and all that then. So I think Daniel saw up to that point. Okay, that's the... Um, that's 70 AD, correct? That or was you, that was after Jesus' death. Right? That was that was up until no, that was before his death. That was before, that was before, that was but remember it's been torn down how many times? So the, the part where I think he okay, saw okay, up to the okay. point where um, they were defiling the um, the temple and when they were putting all the um, pigs up there for, to, for sacrifice. That's the mm -hmm. Maccab right, that's what I just said. That's the, the Maccabean the revolt. So okay, so just so I can understand in my own thing, I do it by the temples, right? So you're saying he saw up into the temple that um, Solomon built. David's son, right? As as do I have his name right, Solomon? You saying he saw that first temple built? I mean, destroyed? Uh, no, no, because at that point, yeah. wait. So, so she talking about the temples. We talking about the the revolt when they defiled the. We talk about the abomination of desolation. Yeah, that's the Maccabean uh, period. Right, but she's asking Daniel when Daniel saw when um, God allowed Daniel to see out into the the future. Right, yeah, he how saw far the, how far out? Which temple is she's asking? Which temple? How far out did he see? Did he see out all the way to? The, he saw all the way up to the Maccabean re revolt. That last okay. time, Judith Maccabee rose up against Rome, and they took back the temple after they defiled it. Right, so I understand before, that you said that, but before, I don't know what temple. I mean, that's before Solomon. That's way before Solomon, right? No, Solomon's. Uh, no, Solomon built that's the first great. temple. Right, but she's asking Daniel's vision when he had his when the um a Lord allowed him to see his vision mm -hmm. when when she when what temple at what point did it stop for Daniel? Is what she's asking. It stopped at the back of beings. So what temple you, was it at that point? The temple at that point, that had to have been the temple that Herod built. Herod built the temple. We built the temple. So by the time you got the Maccabean, that had to be the Herod's temple that he built. Okay, how many temples do y'all believe have existed? It was a couple. Yeah, I agree. Because I know there's when Moses and them was there, they was intense. They had holies and holies. That was tense. But the first, right, 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 exactly. So it wasn't no temple. But the first temple came from Solomon. Or no, what? It was destroyed. They destroyed that one first. Uh, okay, so yeah. Remember when um, 
uh, Daniel and them went into captivity to Babylon. Right. They destroyed that Solomon temple then. Right, right, Remember, right. Remember uh, Zerubbabel and, and Nehemiah and, you know, Zerubbabel. And remember the, the first group that got out of captivity went back to rebuild the temple? Yes. That was the Solomon Temple. They destroyed that. Okay, so that would be, okay, the, you're helping me now. So what is the temple that was standing during the Maccabees? That's the temple that Herod built. I don't know that. Temple. I'm lost with that because I don't I don't know that Herod built the, you mean the one where, the, where um, I just, I have to put it to Jesus when he was alive. That was the second temple, correct? When Jesus was alive, that was the temple that Herod built. Okay, I now I'm following you. I was just trying to find out what temple it was. Remember 70 AD came? Yes. The temple that was standing in, that was the temple that Herod built. Okay, okay. So the, well, you telling me something I ain't know, because I didn't know Herod built that temple. David got, uh, the one Solomon built got destroyed when they went into Babylon. Right, and right. And then Herod built another temple. Okay, okay, and okay. AD, the final fall of that temple was after 70 AD, because remember, the Maccabeans took it back because they conquered Rome for defiling uh, the, the temple with the pigs. Mm -hmm. putting pigs in blood at the altar the pigs blood slaughtering them at the altar and defiling the temple so Judith Maccabean and the Maccabean revolt took back the temple from the heathen which is Rome and they conquered Rome so the Maccabean revolution and all that thing that went down with the Maccabeans see when you get your bible the old testament leave off at Malachi right um, yes, I don't know. I got, I would have to check. I'm not sure. Right. And you don't hear nothing else until the book of Matthew. So before they took all the books, the apocryphas out of the Bible, which was in the uh, early Bibles, they had the Maccabean uh, revolt. revolt and revolt. And um, when you look at uh, Malachi and Matthew, the book of Matthew, there's 400 years missing. And within that 400 years was those, you see those wars that was in Daniel 11 between those, those three um, mm -hmm. kingdoms, those kingdoms break away from Alexander the Great. Yes. All of those wars that you read in Daniel was inside the space of that 400 years that's missing between uh, Malachi in the book of Matthew. So all of those events was within that 400 years between Malachi and the book of Matthew. So today's Bible, you get Malachi, then the next chapter you open up is the book of Matthew. But mm -hmm. in older Bibles in the 1800s, it had Malachi and then it had the Maccabees, the book of the Maccabees, it covered from Malachi to Matthew. So if you got a hold of a, a, a 1611 Bible, you will see the Maccabees in between Malachi and Matthew. But with the new Bibles, the whole 400 years is gone, missing. Okay, so again, then y'all believe that he, that Daniel saw all the way up and only until 70 AD? Yeah. Okay. And he, got, he got a glimpse out further, but these, as far as this fighting and these wars and the destruction of the temple and where they mentioned the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist within that time span with those temples, that's what Dan, Daniel saw. Right. Okay. And then okay. He, said he has to shut it up from him. He can't give him no more because the rest of the revelation is, is slotted in slide it for another time and he has gotten enough revelation so that revelation where god cut him off he said i can't give you no more the rest of the revelation was reserved for john on the island of patmos and he right the rest. okay okay he, I, I told you far, he couldn't give him everything but he gave him a glimpse all the way out but he had to pull it back because 
the rest of the revelation was reserved for John. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the book of Revelation, it almost is like it picks up where Daniel's left off at. Mm -hmm. So he had to say he had to cut Daniel off. I can't give you all of it. I can't give you more. So the rest of the seal for another time. And the time with John in the same predicament on the Isle of Patmos, not knowing what's going to happen. He'd been given a charge to, to, to start the church. Now he's being isolated and he don't know what's going on. And then that's when he got the revelation from Jesus himself. Okay, I understand. I understand. I'm following you now. I'm following now. I was yeah. just... I just was a little lost by the, I didn't know what temple y'all believed. Herod built the temple. Herod built the temple. And that was the temple that they totally destroyed in 70 AD. So that wasn't the temple of Solomon because that had been destroyed. And right. then when they rebuilt it, they destroyed it again. But then Herod, when he took over, when he was given the power by Rome, he built another temple. And it's, it's the same Herod and the same bloodline, Herodian bloodline that wanted Jesus killed. Remember he sent out to kill all the babies, all the boys? Yes. It's the same group of people, you know. When you talk about Herod, you gotta talk about which one because just like these three people on the screen, Harry had a, a dynasty, and they was all different Harrods. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did study that part. Harry yeah. did build that temple, that last temple that was destroyed in the 70 AD. And it was built totally different from the temple that Solomon built. So even if you look at the construction and the layout, you know, it was different. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Evangelist. Hey, yeah. Are we so do we need to elaborate anymore or are we like kind of done? Well, I think it's a lot more information we didn't go over, right? Yeah, we stopped at 12. Okay. And then the video kind of read the whole rest of it to us. Mm -hmm. Right. Because see, it's so much going on with the wars. You got to understand it's not just one Ptolemy. Mm -hmm. Ptolemy the first, the second, the third. So these wars was going on back and forth. One conquering one, one conquering the other. One wanted to combine and start peace. Then they fighting again. This took place all the way to the end of the Greek um, rain in that area. So they had problems with this fighting all the way up to the end. Right. And um, for every one of you, y'all went through the statue, for every kingdom, there's a prince. The prince is a fallen angel and he's over that region while that particular uh, kingdom reigns. And when that reign is up, that fallen angel has to move and then another one takes its place until it's all finished. That's right. So that's the, that's the debate. That's where Gabriel keep running into trouble with these princes because there's different orders of angel and Gabriel is not one to fight those principalities. Archangel angel Michael is the angel over the children of Israel. That's his people. So whenever Gabriel had a problem with that principality moving, when, when y'all started the lesson, he said, I was strengthened. The strength came from Michael because he had to move that principality because he couldn't do nothing with that principality, even though it was changed. So remember, it started with now the reign of Darius, the Mede. That's a whole different principality. So that old one, that old prince has to move and make way. And if, if, if Gabriel have a message, he has to move. And if he don't move, Gabriel have to call Michael again. So when you hear he strengthened, 
that was Michael. He had to come move some things out of the way so he can get his message through. Now, when you, so like you said, it took you, that was the end of the Grecian Empire, and then it takes you into the Roman Empire, right? Yep, the next is the legs, and we'll be in the Roman Empire until the end. So today, we're at the, the uh, what you call it? The divided Rome. The Rome broke down the empire, dispersed years ago, but it became Europe. So that's the divided room. And even today, they trying to unite room through, uh, what you call it? The U, the U, what you call it? The European, the European, 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 Union. European Union. That's just, that's trying to be the revived room, but we're, we're living in the feet where the iron is mixed with clay. Okay. And then the broken up, divided room. But in the end, they're going to try to consolidate and reunite Rome. But we know the stone, the rock is going to bust up their feet in all kingdoms that man has orchestrated throughout this whole statue with the help of the principalities will be coming to an end. And Christ's kingdom will be ushered in. So we, we're in the feet. <laughs> so now in the scripture, when you get to verse 36, it says in the Amplified, it says that, um, it says on verse 36, it says, then the king, and it has the Antichrist in parentheses, will do exactly as he pleases. He will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and will speak astounding and dis disgusting things against the gods of gods now and it says in the like when you click on it it says the antichrist is the subject from this point in the prophecy to the end of the chapter so starting at verse 36 it's saying that from then on it's talking about the antichrist so the antichrist is the spirit of rome that's going to succeed this medo persian i mean this uh greece um kingdom so when we hear Antichrist, we automatically go to the end times. So no, the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, and the force behind the Antichrist is within that time span Daniel was given also. So if you read it, it's going to repeat itself again in the end times. Right. And that's what I was going to say. So that's the point of going through all of these successive kingdoms, right. even though it's history um it's what it's going this same power that was at work then power. is going to i guess you can almost say i don't want to say resurrect itself because it never really died it never went anywhere, it really died. It's, it's going to try to unite and it's going to do the same thing that it's doing now so what you read and now the antichrist will exalt itself blah, 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 blah. that's rome taking the reins from the grecians so mm -hmm. now rome what you see is the thighs the two legs, the two thighs, that's Rome. So when you read that, the Antichrist, that's them taking the, taking the place of power and the kingdom of power after the Grecian Empire. Okay, so that's how we relate it and tie it back to the very end times. Right. To the be, time of Christ. It'll be the same Rome trying to re resurrect itself and it will exalt itself again, just like it's exalting itself now speaking swelling things against Christ and exalting itself over Christ is going to do it again in the end. It's already doing it. It's now. doing it now through the Pope. Mm -hmm. But then they to unite the kingdom, unite the Roman Empire again, consolidate uh, the European Union and try to revive Rome again. Because it says until God's indignation is complete. So this is going to go on until the very end, until God's judgment is complete. Yeah. So even though we see these powers, um, you know, ruling the world and we see, um, you know, what they're doing. And it even talks about, you know, the martyring of the saints mm -hmm. and the people that, um, you know, that do not bow down to this yeah. system, to this governmental system. Um, the ones that are going to be loyal to Christ, how they're going to be martyred and killed, and how it's going to actually 
strength. And I think verse 35 really stuck out to me where it says, um, some of these, some of those who are spiritually wise and have insight will fall as martyrs in order to refine, to purge, and to make those among God's people pure until the end time. And I thought that that was so powerful because again, when we think of the martyrs, we just think of them being overtaken, but it, it's for the purpose, the purpose of purging out the people who are not loyal, purging out the people who are Go ahead. I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely right because it, it goes to what was it Revelation seven uh, eleven when it said they were they love they overcame uh, they over they love not they lie unto right, death. Right. That's that's where we're going as believers. So as believers, they got the guillotines already set up and they had them set up for years mm -hmm. to behead all those who won't bow to the beast. They had those guillotines. <laughs> forever mm -hmm. and a day is going to come when you're going to have to make a choice and if you know the lord the way you ought to giving up your life won't even be a problem and i love the fact that it says specific it lets us know specifically that all of this is going to be up until yep. god's indignation because it lets us know in that that God is still in control no matter what it looks like it can't go a day past until he says it's done never. you know what I mean he never lost the reign of control ever ever <laughs> um, and, can I just ask a question real fast just to, for clarity mm -hmm. if you don't mind um, it's to Sister uh, Evangelist Gwen um, what did you mean when you said you read that verse and you believe that's the only time he's speaking of the Antichrist? No, I'm not sure what you're asking me. I'm sorry. Some verse you pointed out, I want to say it was verse 35, but you said that's when he began to speak about the Antichrist. The no, 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 no. That's not what I said. I, I said that I was saying that in the Amplified Bible, it says that this is what it says on verse 36. It says, then the king, the Antichrist will do exactly as he pleases. And then when you click on it, it says that it, um, from this verse out to the end, it's talking specifically about the Antichrist. But then we were, it, I was saying that the Antichrist spirit was the spirit that's always been at work throughout these successive kingdoms. That's the point of reason why right. we had to go through these successive kingdoms. And then again, the end times, we're going to see this again. Mm -hmm. Like not, yeah, I didn't want to say like a resurrected power because the power of the Antichrist spirit never went anywhere. But we're going to see the same trends and power, the same power at work again. Mm -hmm. Right. The same and, pattern. Yeah. Right. Because even Jesus said there has been many spirits of the yeah. Antichrist. Many, many people have the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. Anybody that denies Jesus is the son of God, the Bible said that is the spirit of anti-Christ. Right. But there's going to literally be a man, a prediction, not just a system. He going to rule the system, but there's literally going to be a man. Oh, yeah, that's at the end. Yeah. But I mean, the way y'all saying system, I just want to make sure everybody else understand it's not just a system. It's going to be a literal person. It's going to be a literal man. And he will rule the system. Right. He, the, 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 he will be given the power. Exactly. To rule. But it'll be a, a man that you can see. It won't just be a spirit. Exactly. Yes. That's, a, that's, that's what I wanted to make clear right. so that everybody knows it's not just a system. Right. But it's, it, it's, it's going to be a literal man. It's giving power of the beast. But with yeah, Gwen Satan reading, incarnated, the Bible calls him Satan incarnated. Right. right. And um, what Grim was talking about is. No, I'm clear on what she was saying now. I just thought is I thought she was incarnated. under she state. was taking it as though that part right there is when he started talking about the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. But I get what she's saying. I get it. I follow her. Yeah, the, I'm in agreement. I understand. Thank you. Yeah, the Antichrist she, she just read is Rome about to take over where Greece falling off. And Rome has been in control 
you know, under that principality ever since, even to now. And to what uh, Evangelist was saying, God has always been in control all the time. Right. He's but any never. spirit that say Jesus is not the son of God is an antichrist spirit. Right. But that's so it's a, not just Rome. Jesus said anybody that deny that him and the father are one or that he is God or and came in the flesh is an antichrist spirit. Absolutely. But this what was happening here is a power that's taken over also. And we know with every power, they have people following them. So no, they, I'm not arguing that point. My point is only that people understand what the Antichrist spirit is. You and Evangelist Gwen are absolutely 110% correct in what you have been saying. Right. I'm not against it in no way. I just want to bring extra clarity that it's not just Rome, anybody. Any I don't spirit. care if it's me. Oh. If I come up against God and say, which I ain't going to even say, let it come out my mouth. That is an antichrist spirit. But you and Evangelist Gwen, I'm not against what y'all have said. I completely agree that they were under demonic influences, possessed right. by demons, however you want to. They possess an antichrist spirit. I agree with that. But anybody that don't set Christ as their personal savior and try to approach Christ in any other way than him being the only way is the spirit of Antichrist. Right. I agree. It yes. has nothing to do with Rome. It has to do with the individual. Right. And that's, I thank you for saying it like that way, because it is, it's, it got everything to do with that. So I, I, I appreciate you saying it like that. It, Anybody that comes up against Christ, the Bible says that, uh, oh, Father, bring it to my members, Holy Spirit. The scripture says anybody else that try to enter in through another way is considered a thief and a robber for he is the only way. So yep. I get what you're saying and I'm in total agreement. I just wanted clarity for anybody that might not no, and I everybody on here seems so versed, so please don't be offended. But anyone who might have not known anybody that deny Jesus is the Christ has the anti-Christ spirit, and that's what the Bible says. Absolutely. And that's a great point because people always tend to associate the antichrist spirit with a power or the, the man of position in the end. But anyone that denied Christ and failed to accept Christ by faith is an antichrist. Period. Amen. And I believe a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, I agree because I think they look so much for a man. Right. So they they miss the scripture where Jesus. Sister Serena, Jesus is sister letting them know anybody that that the only way to my Father is Christ Spirit. You're anti God. Muted me. Exactly. Am I muted? No, no, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, and again, yeah, so I agree with you, and I I love how you end up putting that. Thank you so much. Just because we still live in a the antichrist spirit is so alive and well even oh. now. How you see, you can't even mention Jesus hardly no more. You could talk about anybody. You could cuss on a job, talk perverted, just anything. If you just mention his name, uh, people just be so enraged. Mm -hmm. So that's an antichrist spirit. Yeah. And it's an antichrist spice, um, an antichrist spirit also in religion. When we substitute mm -hmm. man for relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. 
and a lot of people are sitting in churches and pews today operating in the antichrist spirit and don't even know it yeah that's true so and that's up to you and i and everybody on this line is responsible for sharing the gospel of jesus christ and making points like that available for people to hear so they can be aware you know mm -hmm. so we all have a job to do outside of bible study and sharing this gospel with jesus christ with everybody not withholding anything mm -hmm. and that they would get it you know amen and it's tough but it's because a lot of us have to learn and get it for ourselves first mm -hmm. then we can uh share but when we get it we're not supposed to just hold on and and keep it to ourselves and just keep attending bible studies and doing those things we don't get credit for sitting on the pew yeah bible. <laughs> we get credit for what we do for the king amen we can move from what we've been taught and what we know in our heart to be the word of God. We move from the table and the Zooms to going out and witnessing. And we can start with our family first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those within your circle, start with them. And then you begin to get the, 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 the strength and the spiritual strength and um, the zeal to go out and then witness to strangers. It's not there. All right, I'm gonna let y'all go. My wife gave me the nod. Right. So y'all go ahead. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you do. Everybody feel comfortable moving on to chapter twelve, the last chapter, or do y'all think we need to go over some more stuff in this chapter, or how do y'all feel? I think I personally feel comfortable with going to chapter 12, but if y'all don't, then, you know, we can stay, we can come back here next Thursday. What do y'all think? Sister Serena or Sister Sean, Elder? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. okay. We could go on. Okay. I think we could go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that um, Elder Marie coming in with this information was really good. Thank you for that. I think that, like, um, it broke it down really, really well. Having the visual with the um, the three uh, princes and um, just the information being like placed up there really gave me a chance to um, like I'm a visual person, so I was like, oh, uh, you know, I was able to put everything together much better, and then the video really tied it all together finally so yeah like that was good that's good because i was about to ask you guys yeah that was, was that was, was, it, was it too to much well you know i try to make it very simple okay, as, yeah. as i could you know yeah, and it took Al a while trying to make it also. simple that was all him i just read i just followed directions yeah, that was a big help. Like, I don't think I would have actually been able to put the pieces of the puzzle together without seeing the visuals. So, like, once I seen that, I was like, oh, these are who these people are, and this is how this works. And, like, the north, you know, the south, and all of that I was like, okay, this makes sense now. So. Okay. And that's good because uh, just reading it, if, if you didn't, I'm a visual person too. I, I can. I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> uh, thank God. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We had to uh, call in Pastor Al because I was like, listen, this is too much history. Like, we got to call in the experts on the history. So we do thank you for that, Pastor Al. We thank you. No, to God um, be the glory. Yes. I yes. think that's to God be the glory. Yes. We thank you that we have um, 
have someone to call on when we need it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad and relieved that we only got one more chapter of Daniel left. Chapter 12 is not, it's pretty a brief chapter. So that's where we'll be at next Thursday. Y'all will be finishing Daniel. Um, Monday, we are going to be blessed with Sister Serena speaking. Um, I pray everybody will tune in on Monday at seven because um, let me tell y'all something. Whenever I get on the line with Sister Serena, I always learn something. I always get some type of jewels or some type of gems. Sometimes I don't understand it exactly right away. And then it'll come back around and I'll be like, that's what she was talking about. So I know that you're going to be blessed by her teaching on Monday. So I pray everybody will tune in there. The following Monday is, um, is that Sister Cynthia? Yeah. The following Monday is Sister Cynthia. Sister Cynthia will be speaking the following Monday after that. So, and don't forget, Friday, tomorrow is um, the part, th part, was it part four? Um, is it part three? I think it's part three, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> part three, okay, of urgent care of deliverance, y'all. Tomorrow's part three. So I'll be sending that link out to y'all again tomorrow. So, okay, Shanae said part three. Okay, part three of deliverance tomorrow, Friday at seven, y'all. We'll be sending that information out again to remind everybody. Anybody got anything else before we get off the line? Anybody want to pray out? Thanks, Sister uh, Evangelist. Gwen, I'm sorry. I'm so used to calling you Gwen, so I'll, I apologize. Girl. But thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Girl, you know you just call me Gwen. It ain't, you know, it ain't no thing. Um, call me what you've been calling me. <laughs> But anyway, um, all right, y'all, uh, let's let's pray for us, the, the gentleman that Sister Sean talked about, um, you know, since he's not believing, we're going to pray for him and pray for those. We're going to cast down that that agenda with them bracelets. Um, anybody else got any prayer requests? Yes. Um, just one of our sisters. Um, we won't name any names at the moment. But we got to um, pray against the spirit of depression. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when I truly seen my first glimpse into depression, I made a, a point to never say I'm depressed again. Cause you know, it's a habit. You're like, girl, I was just depressed. Mm -hmm. No, truly I was sad or just a little out of it. You know what I mean? I was never mm -hmm. what they call depressed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know. I've noticed it more with the pandemic that more and more people are getting, you know, they got the spirit and some people actually have it in their family. Mm -hmm. Like it's a generational curse. So just want to pray in general against it. And God knows what sister I'm talking about. So it'll hit. It'll work. Okay. Yep, I got it. All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your word on tonight. Father, we thank you, Father God, for your word. It's true that your word does not come back void, that your word is above your name. God, we thank you, Father God, that Jesus is the word made flesh. We thank you, Lord, that the word is our daily bread. God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. You are the great I am, the one who is, who was, and who is still yet to come. God, we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God, that we know that our redemption draws nigh, Lord. We just thank you. Father God, we thank you.